<laughs> Hi, Brother Roy here. Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. I'd like to take this opportunity, while all of this is going on over in Israel right now, to perhaps educate some people while there's interest on the subject about exactly what is going on over there and who we're dealing with over there. So let's pray. Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed. Thank you for your Holy Bible, history written in advance. Help us to learn your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So who is attacking Israel right now? Right? Well, right now it's Hamas from the West Bank, but believe this, Hamas and Hezbollah, uh, Hezbollah is from the north, Syria and Lebanon. They're all proxy armies, Islamic armies funded by the mullahs in Iran. Uh, and when it comes to destroying and hating Israel and destroying and hating in America, uh, uh, Sunni Muslim and Shia Muslim, that doesn't matter. Uh, they, they fight amongst themselves, but believe me, uh, the, the, the enemy of my enemy, amen. <laughs> they, they, uh, uh, they got no problem, uh, teaming up when it's against Israel or America. Amen. And, uh, so let's, uh, let's look at that real quick. Uh, take your Bible and let's go back to the beginning. See who we're dealing with here. All right. Genesis chapter 16. And, uh, we see that uh, uh, chapter one, now Sarah, Abraham's wife, bare him no children, and she'd had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abraham, Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my handmaid and my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And, Abr and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarah. And Sarah Abram's wife took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Um, and it, we, we, we read down a few verses. And uh, uh, so Hagar got, kind of gets run off with, uh, 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 with her with her son. Uh, she has a son named Ishmael and uh, uh, she gets run off in verse seven. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to shore. And she said to Hagar, Sarah's maid, uh, whence camest thou and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, return to thy mistress and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. Okay, so there is a seed, a certain seed that is going to come from Ishmael and Haggai. And uh, Hagar, I'm sorry, Hagar. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, Thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Here's Ishmael. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Who are his brethren? Well, that, those are his half brothers <laughs> amen that uh, who are the what the children of Israel amen so uh, uh that we see that there uh, uh he's that he is a certain seed and uh that he is going to be multiplied exceedingly and he's going to be a wild man and his hand will be against every man and every man will be against him okay um that's who's invading Israel right now that's who's invading Israel. Look with me real quick in uh, Psalms chapter 83. 
Psalms chapter 83. Get a little bit more breakdown. Psalms 83. Keep not thou silence, verse 1. Keep, that, keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Thy people is always Israel, thine elect. In the, in the, in the Old Testament, Israel, mine elect. The elect of God in the Old Testament is always Israel. And consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And that is the cry of Islam. That is the cry of all the Mohammedans, of all the Islamic nations, is Israel must be driven into the sea. Israel must be eradicated from the face of the earth. Amen. Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They're all in agreement on that. They are confederate against thee. All right. One consent. Sunni, Shia, doesn't matter. Every single one of those nations, the Islamic nations, want to destroy, murder, genocide, eradicate the nation of Israel from off the face of the earth. And it doesn't matter what they say about treaties and peace accords, because as we covered in my last video, and we'll cover more in the next video or two that I'm getting ready to do, uh, lying is encouraged by the Quran and the Holy Hadith, the Islamic holy books. Lying is encouraged. Anything is encouraged as long as it leads to the slaughter, death, and destructions of the, of the enemies of Islam. As long, as long as what you're doing, lying, killing, raping, stealing, it doesn't matter in Islam. As long as it's for the purpose of conquering nations and killing people for Islam, it's okay in that religion. So as long, it doesn't matter if you're lying, killing, raping, stealing, as long as you're shouting, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, God is, God is great, God is great, it's okay. <laughs> no matter what wickedness is being performed, just shout, God is great, God is great, God is great, and, and, and that's okay with Islam. That's that religion. I showed you that in the Quran in my last video. So who are these folks? <clears throat> Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Of Moab and the Hagarines. We can read about them in 1 Chronicles 5.10. Gibal, which is Jabil, that's in Lebanon. And Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines, <laughs> with the inhabitants of Tyr, your modern-day Palestinians, Assur, which is one of the oldest, it is actually, no, the oldest Assyrian city, also is joined with them. They have hoping with the children of Lot. All right, so you've got, uh, uh, you've got the, uh, uh, the, son, the sons of uh, uh, Esau in there. You have the bastard sons of Lot. In there, uh, you have uh, uh, you have the uh, the Palestinians, the Philistines. You have the Ishmaelites, uh, the Ed Edom up there. That's those are the uh, those are the descendants of Esau. So you have that's 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 who this confederation is. That is the people that surround the nation of Israel and wish to destroy the nation of Israel. God goes on to say in verse nine, "Do unto them as unto the Midianites." as to Sisera, as to Jabin, by the brook of Kisan. You can read about that in Judges chapters 4 and 5. Which perished at Endor, they became as dung for the earth. Make, 
Make their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, yea, all their princes as Zeba and as Zalmunna. You can read about that in Judges 7 and 8. Israel always wins. I'm telling you. Don't bet against Israel. Israel always wins. Amen. Who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Oh, my God, make them like a wheel as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame settleth the, setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the Most High over all the earth. His name is Jehovah. The Old Testament, Old Testament revelation of God's name is Jehovah. It's not Allah. It's not Yahweh. I don't care what failed modern scholarship you have chosen to pick and choose and believe because it makes you feel smart and feed your pride. But the King James trans, the Holy Spirit inspired and led the King James translators to put Jehovah in the Bible. Yahweh ain't in your Bible. Allah ain't in your Bible. Jehovah is in your Bible. Just believe your Bible. No extra charge for that one. Amen. So these are the people. These are the people that are coming against Israel and they. And they all say what? Verse 4, they have said, Come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Well, good luck with that. Because God will bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. And this has been going on from time immemorial. God told us that it would. Ishmael would be a wild man. His hand would be against every man. And every man's hand would be against him. Why, he even fights with himself. <laughs> Sunni and Shia always fighting each other. Hey, but as soon as it's time to attack the Jews, they quit fighting with each other and attack the Jews. Amen. But that, I mean, that, that's just, that's just the nature. Uh, uh, the, 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 he is, the, he is, Ishmael is a beast. He is a wild man. He is violent. And there, there, uh, any, any peace <laughs> associated with Islam is a lie. It's a tactic. It's a false be a false peace to get the wh who they call the enemies of God to put their guard down so they can come in and chop their heads off. That's what the Quran teaches. Amen. All right. So uh, now we got to look at the scenario as the Bible lays it out that would be happening in these last days. All right. And we can go to Daniel chapter two. And God gives it all to us. The entire history of the kingdoms of the world were laid out in advance in Daniel chapter two. I mean, that's just uh, the, the ignorance of man just sta is staggering. Man's blindness is staggering. When here you have a book that perfectly laid out the entire future history of the world before it ever happened, and people are just like this. La, 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 la. They don't want to hear it. The Bible is absolutely 100% scientifically provable to be the word of God because it gives you all of history in advance. And only the one who's already in the future, who lives outside of time and eternity, could have done that. The Bible is scientifically provable as a supernatural book. Amen. So when we get to Daniel and we see uh, this vision that Nebuchadnezzar had of this image, 
And Daniel, Daniel breaks this image down. Now, I, I, I'm going to read it all for time's sake. But he says, look, he says, uh, he said, there's a head of gold. And Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar that that's the that's that's you. That's the kingdom of Babylon. Uh, then it comes down and, and, and there's a the chest of silver. And he said that this is this. This is the next empire. This is the Medo-Persian empire and history. And they're going to come and they're going to conquer you and set up an empire. And that's exactly what happened in history. Uh, and then then he came down and he talked about the uh, loin, loins of brass. And he said, that's 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 the next one. And he goes on later on in the book of Daniel and even tells you that there uh, uh, that there's going to be a, a, a king in the rough he, he goat uh, that's going to uh, uh, be, be be the king of uh, of this next empire, which he identifies as Greece. And that and that's what happened. Alexander, the great of Greece, came and he conquered the Medo-Persians and. And it even goes on to tell you that he, that that he's going to die when he's young, and 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 his four generals are going to split up his kingdom, and that happened exactly like the Bible said it would. Amen. And so then it's going to go into another kingdom, and that's going to be these two legs of iron, and we know that uh, uh, that arises out of one of Alexander the Great's. Uh, 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 provinces that were divided by his four general, and that is the Roman empire and it's really it's 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 interesting that it's two legs of iron because the roman empire had an eastern and and a, and a western side the roman imp the, the holy roman empire was split between uh rome and constantinople and uh sometimes there were actually two popes fussing back and forth but that's the holy roman empire and the Holy Roman Empire um, held a, uh, uh, these are the dark ages uh, where the Roman Catholic Church held a death grip over over Europe, over much of the world. And uh, um, it was a time of it was a, a time of, of great darkness. And then, then then the Protestant Reformation came about. And that was a serious blow to the Holy Roman Empire. Um, see, with the, the Holy Roman Empire, the pope ruled the world. The Pope, uh, uh, he set up kings and took kings down over the European nations. And the European nations were all under the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, the, the Pope even uh, uh, appointed a, a, a Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, the first one was Charlemagne. And, and he made him the Holy Roman Emperor over all the other kings and over the nations of Europe. This is the Holy Roman Empire. And uh, we... we Get now so that we, as we read about uh, um, about this, uh, let's go down to. We'll start in about now that I've given you the outline. You'll 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 follow along. Um, verse thirty eight. And whose, wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given unto thy hand. This is Daniel talking to to uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. Uh, and hath made thee ruler over them all, uh, thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall rise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom uh, of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. Okay, that's the Medo-Persians, and then out then the Greeks, Alexander the Great. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. That's the legs of iron. That's the, the Rome, Holy Roman Empire. And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. Uh, the, it, it, this, this, it, you'll notice that these metals have become harder, harder, and stronger. And uh, the Roman Empire was brutal. Uh, amen. And uh, then verse 41 says, And whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes. Okay. Now we're, now we're getting, now we're getting to the, the very end, to the very end. Cause, uh, uh, he said the the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Uh, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven Set up, a, set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, 
and the kingdom shall not be left to other peoples, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Daniel said he saw a stone cut out without hands, and it comes and it crushes these, this feet and this toes, part of iron and part of miry clay. Remember going back now that we've got some context. That Ishmael, God's promise to Hagar was thy seed, thy seed, the seed of Ishmael. Hmm? He's going to be a wild man. His hand's going to be against every man. Every man's hand's going to be against him. His seed, right? Look at verse 43. And whereas thou saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So you have the, you have the seed of Ishmael, and it's not going to mix and, and mingle well with anybody because he's a wild man. His hand's against everybody and everybody's hand's against him. But they're going to be partly mixed together. And now as we look at the structure of the world, at politics, as what is happening as absolute and perfect fulfillment of everything God had said. Because what we have witnessed in our lifetime is the establishment of the European Union. And the European Union is all the nations of the Holy Roman Empire come back together. And you look at the flag of the European Union, that is Charlemagne's flag of the Holy Roman Empire. So we have a, in our time, in fulfillment of prophecy, we have a revived Holy Roman Empire. And we, we see that represented by the, by the Ten Kings in the book of Revelation. And it all ties back in with the book of Daniel. It all ties back in with Ishmael. And, and what we read about him back in Genesis. And we have this revived Roman Empire. The strength of iron in it. But it's mixed with miry clay. What has been happening in the, in the past few decades? And most recently, just in the last 20 years or so. Well, what has been happening to Europe is the same thing that's been happening to the United States. Just like the United States has had a demographic change, a demographic change because of illegal migration from South and Central America and Mexico, there had been so much illegal immigration flowing up out of South America, Central America, and Mexico that it has significantly changed the demographic of the United States. I'll give you one quick example. When I was growing up in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Hispanic population of the school district, Clark County School District, where I went to school when I grew up, the Hispanic population was under 5%. Now, my daughter, who's 29 years old, when she was growing up here in Las Vegas, Nevada, in the Clark County School District, while she was growing up, the percentage of Hispanic in the Clark County School District was 75%. There's been a demographic change. They have, flow, they have flowed up into the country. And they've changed the balance, the demographic. This is just an example. Most of, the, most of those coming out of Central, Central America, South America, Mexico are Catholic. Or if they're coming from the communist countries, they're atheist and commun communist and they're Catholic. That's, that's basically what's flowing up into the United States. But Europe is, is a different situation. What has happened to Europe is the Islamic nations have been flowing into Europe and they have the exact same thing. Whereas a couple few decades ago, back perhaps when I was a child, 
that would have been a very small percentage of Arabic Islamic population in the European nations. But now the demographic has changed. They have come in, they've taken over neighborhoods, they've taken over cities. Why, even London, England has an Islamic mayor now. The demographic has changed. What? The, uh, the miry clay has come into the Holy Roman Empire. And it is, it is mingled with the iron that was always there. But listen, they can mingle, but they will not. They will not cleave with the seed of men, what the, the men that were there, the, 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 the men of the Holy Roman Empire, they will not cleave with them because uh, miry clay and iron don't cleave one with another. But that's what you're looking at. That's what you're looking at in these end times, in this revived Holy Roman Empire, which when you continue to look in Daniel, you see that the Antichrist arises out of this Holy Roman Empire. I've heard, I've heard uh, um, uh, some preachers say that they think that the Antichrist will be an Islamist, will be a, a, a Muslim. And I, 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 don't think, I don't think that. I don't think he's going to be anything as far as established religion on earth now. He is going to come and he's going to say that he is the fifth imam. The, the 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 fulfillment of Muslim prophecy. He's going to say to the Jews that he is the Messiah they've been waiting for. He's going to say to the Catholics and the and, and the Christians, "I am the return of Jesus Christ." So he's going to have a one world religion that's going to bring all these faiths in, and that all the world will worship and wonder after the beast. But he's going to come in through the Holy Roman Empire. And the Bible says he's going to ride upon the whore of Babylon. He's going to use the Roman Catholic Church, the Roman Catholic religious system, which is even now uh, uh, linking up and joining hands in an interfaith center and, and it, with, with, with Islam and Jewish and Christian. They, 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 in the United Arab Emirates, they have this Catholic interfaith temple compound now with three buildings, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, and, and, and the Pope's coming out. We're all God's children. We all serve the same God. The stage is being set. Uh, I, I, I'm not personally sure that the Antichrist is going to be a Pope, but I think that the false prophet that is going to support the Antichrist probably will. And we, we can't cl call everything just yet 100% certain. But ooh, as time goes on and these things begin to come to pass, as everything written in the book comes to pass, and we can see, yep, 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 the book was always right, that we're going to know more and we're going to know more and we're going to know more. Praise God. <laughs> so when you see what's going on in the Middle East right now, no, this was always going to happen. And this, this isn't going to get better. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, Apostle Paul told us that in the end times that we, in a church age epistle written to the body of Christ, he says that last days perilous times shall come. So we, we can understand that we are not going to be here for the tribulation for the time of Jacob's trouble for Daniel's 70th week, because that is for Israel. Uh, and, that, and, and, and to not recognize that is just to not rightly divide and understand the Bible at all. But in order for the church age to be done and the body of Christ to be out of here, so God can again turn to and begin dealing with the nation of Israel and fulfill, fulfilling all of the Old Testament prophecy to the nation of Israel, the body of Christ, the church has to be gone. And that's our blessed hope. Hallelujah. Well, that, 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 that one day soon that trumpet will blow and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So listen, don't get it twisted. 
and we don't need to lay up food and guns and prepared to go to war. No, what we need to do is recognize our blessed hope, keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ, stay on the front line of this battle and uh, continue, continue to uh, snatch them from the fire. Our job is to warn mankind of what is coming. Our job is to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and offer them the only hope. The only hope that exists is salvation in the death, burial, and resurrection, the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, opening to all men. It doesn't matter. Islam, Catholic, Jew, Gentile, it does not matter. All men are on the same level before a holy God. We're all sinners. And we all need that shed blood of Jesus to wash our sins away. Receive the free gift of salvation. Open your heart and let Jesus come in and save you. And you'll be out of here. You don't have to be around when it all gets really bad. But hey, interesting times we live in. And we'll continue to do uh, more on this subject in future videos. God bless you. You know I love you, and we'll see you next time.